Howdy. We do a, another video, this time talking about this black temp Templar that I've just finished. Let's see how close he can get in. Oh, he's getting pretty, oh, that's about as close. So um, this guy just finished uh, recently, not just just finished. I finished the uh, Primaris Death Guard, uh, which I'll be posting after this, just after. So keep an eye out for that if you're interested. Uh, I think it's come out pretty well. It's probably going to be one of my favourite, my favourite uh, Primaris Trader Marines so far. Uh, and this time, using this new red grass game handle that I just received in the mail, it's actually it's pretty good. It's this turning thing on the top is really useful. Um, can help keep it kind of like smooth and in focus for you guys. So uh, then we'll talk about a few things. Um, this this guy was an interesting project. Uh, probably the most challenging of the Marines that I've painted this time uh, because I was trying something new that was a potential big risk. It, it's very subtle, but um, a lot of the time when I'm painting, especially on Space Marines, which I've basically used as the, the platform to practice this sort of stuff, but usually you go for like uh, value, saturation and temperature focal here and then dropping away. And, th and that's the same, like this, this guy has the focus up here, but I wanted to try and see if it would be possible to, instead of having the saturation up here, have the saturation down here because his all the all the really cool Black Templar artwork that's out there. I really like the way that it's like all really warm. So I've tried to keep it like that with this Uh, with this one, but I also wanted to, to see whether it would be possible to, rather than having the saturation up here, have the saturation down here, but because the other parts of the focal, uh, the focus work, like the value and the temperature are slightly colder and, and also the value is higher up here, you get the, you get the focus up here while being able to play with the, the temperature down here, and I think it's worked. I, it's not something I'll do all the time, but it's nice to know that you can sort of break those rules once you sort, once you start to understand them. I, I I don't really know what I'm doing a lot of the time. It's just you know trial and error, see how it turns out. So it's cool. And the other the other part of it of the idea was there's saturation and and warmth in his face, then cold desaturated color around the head area and then it goes down into this more saturated the dirty mixed with sort of maybe like flame um, light and he's just getting like a ray of sunshine or something that's shining through the smoke that's, that's caught his face you know we paint these guys to have the perfect moment to show them off um, with the ambience and so the back is is kind of like a bit more orange, a bit more saturated overall, so that it, it's kind of like um, making sure the light is just right. So he's standing in a flame burning surroundings. I've tried to use those flame colors in the, in the non-metallic metals on the blade. It's a pretty decent conversion in this guy. Um, I'll put up a photo of the converted state uh, I mean the pre-painted state of this part if to show you guys what I've I've done but I used the Lieutenant Amulius model uh, I sculpted the the robes on the front and a part of these robes too I also cut this robe off uh, another another model this lip over here is sculpted but this center section is from one of the uh, Indomitus Crusade um, Blade Guard veterans. Uh, this is Amulius's arm, and then this fist is from Forge World. 
helmet is from uh, I think just a regular intercessors kit the gun arm is from the the quick build um no no fear box I think the head is from the new assault intercessors uh, I sculpted this part of the cloak at the back up there uh, some parts of this but another this is from another the bottom of another of the um, blade guard veterans so it's complicated conversion as well as being simple at the same time um, another of the interesting things that I find with this model is that all of the colors that I've used are consistent throughout all of the elements I mean there are lots of differences here and there I used I use a lot of different colors with my work but for example, the non-metallic metals, the black and the robe, they're all using the same main few colors to build them. So I'll put up a photo of the, the main five colors that are making this up, which are the scale 75 artist acrylics. But you've got the, the dark brown ochre, uh, which is the, the base dark reddish color that, that goes over the black to create the black it's the color in the shadow of the cloak here to create the red in the darkness it's there's really not much of it left because it's been painted over it's too dark for white uh, it's the main color in the highlights of these blacks it's the main color for the gray of the non-metallic metals and then you've got uh, you've got wood which is a very de desaturated red, which I've used as part of the main highlight for the, the edge highlighting in the colder areas because it's a colder reddish gray. It's a great color, that one, that scale artist wood. When combined with dark ochre, they make some really nice tones. I didn't use it down, I didn't use it down here in the, in the bottom of the leg. That's where the red ochre, the red ochre comes in. Um, and then you've got like the, the buff and the, the golden flesh. So golden flesh makes up down here, buff starts to go up here and then you've got mixing in white. And I think I also used um, Citadel Rakarth flesh as one of the desaturated colors. So that's still what I would call a warm color. But when you compare it to the rest of the colors in this piece, it, it ends up looking a bit cold. Like you could almost say that the white, when you just look at it, you could almost say that the white up here is, is cold enough to, to feel cold. But if, if you were to, you know, separate it out and not look at it with everything surrounding it and put a cold blue next to it, it would end up looking warm compared to that. And that's the kind of color play that I absolutely love at the moment. It's really complicated stuff to work out, but it's fun when you can figure it out. Uh, and then this metallic parts, it, believe it or not, the most of the metallics on this gun are just edge highlights. So you've got the, the base, the, the dark brown ochre, and then you start to mix in some buff or golden flesh with the, or even wood with the dark brown ochre. And example for this part of the gun, this square here, you've got the highlight down in the corner just over this side, but it's only very subtle. I think that would probably only be just going into like wood over the dark brown ochre. But then you've got like buff and, and golden flesh as the highlights, which are the edge highlights. And, and that's, those are the colors that make up the cloak and the shoulder pads. So that's where that comes in. And then you can mix in a little bit of the golden yellow f with the, um, the red ochre for the edge highlighting on his feet and down low. But because you want the saturation there, you don't mix in the desaturated colors that I've used up in the top area here. So yeah, a bit of a complex idea to work with, but I, I feel like it's turned out pretty well. Um, I'm quite happy with this, this guy overall. I feel like he's sort of, he's a, a modern take on that Blanchitsu style kind of all warm colors stuff really like that style and I feel like he's come out quite well uh, It's not I 
don't think is my best Primaris, uh, but I have painted a lot of them, so it's hard to sort of rank them. I like most of them, and I do like this guy. Don't know what I would do differently. I think my biggest problem is probably my sculpting skills. Like, the robe's okay, but it could be better. Um, and there are smoothness problems with the areas that I've sculpted, but that's probably just me being ridiculously picky because that's how I am. And the base is Amulius's base with just some other flat blitz of slate and sand around it. So, yeah, we're getting close on to 10 minutes there. Uh, I want to try and keep these videos under 15. 10 minutes is good. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it informative. Uh, if you have any questions about the things that I've talked about, I'm happy to answer them in the comments. Uh, hope you're all doing well and catch you next time.